Uh, good evening to everybody. I was just going to see if you could hear me, and it sounds like you can. I'm here to brief you on the details regarding our Los Angeles County deputy uh, who was shot in the line of duty. Now, uh, just to be clear, the information that I'm going to provide is preliminary, and it's going to change. Uh, so I'll try and give you the best information possible, but be patient with us because, like I said, unfortunately, it will uh, change, or maybe fortunately for us. These are the facts as we know them. This afternoon, at approximately 2.45 p.m., Deputy Samuel Aspuro was on duty, attending training, in uniform, working patrol as a motorcycle unit. He was waiting at a red light on his marked LA County Sheriff's motorcycle in the southbound lanes of North Barranca Street at the intersection of East Garvey Avenue here in the city of West Covina when he was shot in the back. I want to repeat that. He was sitting on a marked black and white police motorcycle in full uniform and he was shot in the back. Deputy Espuro was transported to a local hospital where he was treated and thank God the bullet did not penetrate his bulletproof vest. Fortunately, or sorry, based on the examination of his vest, he was struck once. And I'm very grateful to say that he is currently listed in stable condition. At this time, the Los Angeles County homicide investigators are investigating this shooting with the assistance from the West Covina Police Department. Detectives are in the initial stages of this investigation and are seeking the public's assistance to apprehend this suspect. Anyone that was in the area, again, at the intersection of North Barranca Street and East Garvey around 245 today, and you think you saw something, you need to contact us because we need to get this individual who did this to one of our deputies, and I say ours because it's our community, he's a servant, and he was shot in the back. And we consider this, this individual to be a public safety risk at this point. So if you have information, please contact us. I'm gonna give you some information on that. And uh, you've seen some activity. Uh, we did detain uh, several individuals, we called them people of interest. Uh, we are in the process of releasing them at this time because they may not, and I underline may not, be involved in this. But according to another witness, there may be another vehicle of interest that we, again, want to bring the community's attention to. So again, going back to this area, even if you've seen anything at all, but specifically, if you saw a white sedan with tinted windows last seen westbound on the 10 freeway from Barranca, please, we need to hear from you. We need to hear from you. Because right now there is somebody out there armed with a firearm who shot one of our deputies in the back. And if he's willing to do that, I'm sure he's willing to shoot at anybody else. And we collectively, all of us, need to get him off the streets. If you have any information, uh, please call our homicide detectives at 323-890-5500. Or you can remain anonymous by calling LA Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS. Again, we're standing in front of you. I appreciate all of our partners in the media being here, but I'm reaching out to our community. Somebody saw something, and we need to get this person off the street. I stand ready to answer any questions that you may have.
the first question I just heard is, uh, is there any video? Uh, as you see uh, from our department and the resources from the West Covina Police Department, we have a lot of resources on site and we have more en route. Uh, we have a lot of investigative steps to take. Reviewing video will be a very important aspect of what we're looking at. And if we gain any new information, uh, we'll do whatever we can to put it out. I heard a question over here to my right. Was he training? Was he a training deputy? Uh, the question is, was he a training deputy? He was on uh, one of our uh, assigned uh, motorcycles, uh, LA County uh, Sheriff's Department motorcycle in uniform, and his assignment for today was he was going to training. What, what was the intel that led you to the La Puente location, and what can you tell us about the people who were detained there? I, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? What was the intel that led you to the La Puente location, and what can you tell us about the people who were detained at that location? So what was the information that led us to the location in La Puente that many of you have seen the news coverage on? Uh, we immediately, the, the deputy did an amazing job of putting out emergency broadcasted information. Just a, a absolute heroic, amazing. And there was some information that initially came out. Uh, there were some people who came forward. But as you can, it, it just picture yourself waiting for a red light at an intersection and all of a sudden you hear a gunshot. Who saw what? Cars are leaving. They're going in different directions. Um, so at one point, we had some preliminary information that we thought we had another potential suspect vehicle, or at least a vehicle of interest. That's what led us to that location and some other individuals. Uh, but as you see, our resources here, we're not only looking for those responsible, but if we have information and we come across people who are not responsible, we want to let them uh, free as soon as we possibly can. Was there only one shot fired and any indication if it was at close range? As far as we know now, I can tell you that the deputy was hit once in the back. Uh, how many shots were fired? Uh, we'll establish that. Uh, it, it, behind me, you're seeing a very active crime uh, investigation, or a crime scene, I should say. Uh, I, I don't want to say just one, two, until we determine that for sure. In regards to the range that this occurred, uh, that is still being determined by the investigation. So, Sheriff, in terms of the options are on the table. Well, we don't know. So uh, that's why information, you are our eyes and ears out there. That's why we need information coming forward so we can look at every angle. Because our intent is we're going to get you, but we need your help. Do you believe the bullet could best save his life? Uh, the question was, do we have any information on the license plate? That's the type of information we need from the public. And as we are out there canvassing for video, uh, we may come up with something. And as soon as we do, we'll put something out. There was a, another question over here. I'm sorry. Do you believe the bulletproof vest saved his life? Yes. The bulletproof vest he was wearing absolutely saved his life. Can you, do you, would you call this an ambush attack? And can you speak to that a little bit? The question is, do I consider this an ambush and then talking about the style of attack? Uh, what kind of person shoots another person in the back? I could think of a lot of names for that. I won't describe them right now. But if you're shooting a deputy sheriff that's sitting on a motorcycle waiting for a red light uh, and you shoot him in the back, uh, to me, that's the worst of the worst. Uh, that, it, you could call it an ambush. Again, there's a lot of uh, words that I can come up with, with uh, for that, and none of them are good right now. Uh, we don't know yet. We intend to find out. But at the end of the day, I have a servant, a public servant, sitting at a red light. Sounds a little familiar from what happened to us in the past just waiting for a red light to turn in full uniform and he shot in the back. That's unacceptable. What are you telling your deputies? Uh, 
first of all, we check on each other. Uh, and these men and women around me, uh, they work together. Uh, this is the toughest job in America, hands down. And this proves it again, that we're just sitting at an intersection and we get shot in the back. So we will console each other. We have our psychological services that will be out here and we'll continue to check on our employees. And then we're communicating not only with our, the members of our department, but uh, through just like we would expect it from any other department, we're sharing as much as we can with allied agencies because we don't want one of their officers sitting at an intersection and being shot in the back the way our deputy was earlier today. Uh, the, this intersection will be closed until the crime scene is processed and then secured. Um, we'll get back to you on how much time. We don't want to inconvenient anybody, but we have work to do to make sure that we get every clue, collect all the evidence we can to uh, apprehend uh, this individual. Can you tell us about the deputy? Our deputy has been on the department just short of 20 years, about 19 and a half years. He's married, he has two children, ages four and two. So if you can imagine their reaction when we tell them their husband and father were just shot in the back. Uh, but we'll take care of the family, that's our priority, as we will take care of our employees and I'm sorry, uh, he is uh, 43 years old. And with that, I really appreciate you guys covering this story. Please get it out to everybody. We need to get this individual off our streets. Thank you.